Biliary tract cancers to date have been treated with gemcitabine and cisplatin-based regimens, and we conducted a single-arm phase two trial of gemcitabine, cisplatin, and nab paclitaxel that had some promising efficacy with a median overall survival of 19.2 months. So SWOG 1815 was designed to really understand what gemcis, nab paclitaxel did in comparison to the standard of care at the time, gemcitabine and cisplatin. So the study was designed as a two-to-one randomization comparing the two arms with a primary endpoint of overall survival and a total of 441 patients were enrolled across the entire country through the NCTN mechanism with an NCI-sponsored study that was open through SWOG. So the results demonstrated that the median overall survival of gemcis nab paclitaxel was 14 months compared to 12.7 months. Uh, this difference was numerically improved but did not reach statistical significance. There was also numerical improvement in progression-free survival but again did not reach statistical significance. And the overall response rate of gemcis nab paclitaxel was 31% versus 22% in the gemcis arm. So also in better but not significant in terms of differences. The study, though, did demonstrate some potential signals of efficacy in certain pre-specified stratification factors. So, for instance, in gallbladder cancer patients, as well as locally advanced patients, there's perhaps some promising data that suggests better OS, better overall response, but these numbers were small, so we really need further investigation to understand that better. The safety and toxicity did show a higher incidence of grade three to five hematologic toxicities in the triplet arm, which was not surprising, uh, but there was not any difference in the treatment discontinuation rate. So patients did stay on both arms about the same. So overall, it does seem that there may be some benefit for gemcis nab paclitaxel, but I think we need to better understand the patients in whom it may benefit them.